I would not be here today if it wasn't for Ocetti, if it wasn't for standing up. Um, that was a point of spiritual transformation for me. And the closer our car started getting to Ocetti, it felt like we were nails and like it was a magnet. It felt like that. It felt magnetic. And it was in a way a homecoming. It felt like in part a spiritual homecoming as well. There was so much good, like every day that we were there at the camp. People singing, people praying, people laughing, kids playing, birds chirping. I mean, it was just a great environment. And it was so good that every day felt the same. Um, I was happy to be at Standing Rock. It was September of 2016. Uh, I happened to know the sister of Chairman Arshembo. And so I was able to um, connect with her and, and feel like I was a part of things. I, I felt that it was important for me to go there and take that stand with them and let them know that they weren't alone, that, that they were doing what a lot of us um, could relate to for a long time, right? We have our own sacred land that's under attack here in New Mexico. And uh, I feel like when, you know, when we all rise up and we come together on those things that, it get, you know, we, we share the strength. And to be on that camp and to see people who came and had the intention of coming for just a few days, then go back home, sell their car, sell all of their worldly possessions, just to be there. Um, when I heard these stories of people doing this, I was like, this is crazy. But then when I got there, I couldn't think of any more important place to be. I couldn't think of any more important way or thing to contribute to. And, um, and I think that that is, that is not only inside all of us, but that it, that, is growing. The urgency of that feeling is growing. And uh, while I was, while I always cared about things before, while I always organized around things before, uh, I was at camp, and one of the things that was very transformative was just the generosity with space, with the taking in. I didn't have to prove myself. I didn't have to be anything. What made that transformative was that uh, while I was always willing to give, it wasn't until I was ready to give everything and then these opportunities in this door started to present themselves. You know, there's so many issues that Native Americans have suffered through that, um, that we, all, we could all probably find a reason to, to get out and protest, to make things right. And I feel like that, that stand sort of helped Native people to understand that uh, we do have common interests, we, d we do care about each other. Uh, we should stand together on these issues and fight for what's right. You know, so I need, you know, I need to go home. I need to, to seek a leadership position. I need to do my part to prepare my people, to strengthen my people, to help them to stand up, to help to, per you know, there's so much things that need to be done. We need to prepare. We need to strengthen ourselves. We need to unite ourselves. We need to. We need to pray. This is about change, changing ourselves, and uh, people would think that that is hopeless. But you all created a space where tens of thousands of people were able to change themselves, and so that it is first and foremost a spiritual battle, yes. a spiritual transformation that is in front of us, and. Um, that is the problem why so much of this has been ignored and, and this clim climate and environmental battle has been failing for so long because it's been so reliant on just science, facts, figures, 
This is the empirical argument for change. We need that empirical argument for change. We need all of those things, but that is not what moves people. What moves people is to see themselves improved and transformed as we tr improve and transform our ways. I never thought there would be a day that we as people had to stand up against the pipeline. But we have a life to live. And we have things that we need to preserve. And we have generations yet yeah, that we have to look out for. And here I am. <laughs>